All right, guys, another day of detecting. It's raining, it's fall. We are back on one of the very first fields that I ever detected. This was the site of like a 1930 schoolhouse, and there was stuff going right back to the turn of the century here. We've run every machine we've ever owned here, so I thought this would be a great place to come out and test out the legend. We were getting all kinds of coins back in the day. It's, pickings are pretty slim right now, but uh, we're gonna do at least an hour here. I'm waiting for a call from our new friend, Doug, who wanted us to look for his great aunt's ring. And he says that he may be around this afternoon. And if so, we're gonna shoot over there and try one more time to find that ring, put an hour in over there if we can. We're gonna start right here, testing the legend in this field. Fingers crossed, I've got a good feeling. There's still old coins here. We're gonna find something. Really windy and cold out here, guys. You might remember this is the field where my wife's uh, grade school was, and they buried a time capsule here. We spent 30 hours looking for this sucker, never found it. There was a monument here that was dug up many years later. I think the kids would have buried the time capsule right by the monument. When they removed the monument, the time capsule was moved with it. I think is what happened because I've never found it. But uh, today I'll just show you my settings on the legend as well. We're gonna be trying um, stability of four and iron bias of four. I changed those from the default settings, just was re hearing good things about them online with those settings, so no idea, not enough hours on this machine, we're gonna try it on that setting. And there's our settings we're gonna use, guys. Park, M3, and F mode. All right, first hole, Scritchy 37 somewhere in that range. Looks like it's a really old button. I think maybe like a 1930s button. Let's uh, brush it off. Definitely some gold plate on the back of this. So I think it is in fact an old button. Oh, you can see a bit of gold plate there in the front as well. Some old farmer bling. I'm not too sure about the ferro iron check bars on the legend. This was showing no iron and it's definitely a piece of iron. And I've seen that a few times just in my limited experience with the legend so far. Uh, if you guys have experience with this machine, let me know. How accurate is the um, iron bar? You know, there's two bars, right? This bar here should show if the item has iron, and this shows if it's a ferrous, you know, high conductive target. And I wasn't getting any iron, and this is iron, definitely. The nice thing about this machine for YouTubers is we can split the audio to come through my headset and the machine. I've got two targets right beside each other here. Two targets, both reading around 30. 28 to 30. And this one's a little higher, 34, 36. We'll dig them both. Okay, <laughs> it's another one of these things. So maybe they're not buttons. I don't know what that is. Let's find out what the second signal was down there. And there's the second target. And if you haven't asked yourself what recovery speed is Gary running the machine on, then you have to question how much do you really want to know about the legend? I'm running it on recovery speed seven. And as you guys saw, those two items were maybe four or five inches apart and it banged them out. Ding, 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 no problem. An old candy wrapper in the schoolyard. Imagine that. It's actually more like a tin foil. It was ringing up solid 22. Okay, so I only dug this because it was showing iron and 34 and I just wanted to see You know, what was it? <laughs> I knew it was gonna be garbage, but you know when you're testing the machine sometimes you just got to dig Almost everything. I Just got a text from Doug. He says he can meet me over at the old farm uh, house in a few minutes So I'm gonna pack up here and we're gonna go over there and search for his great aunt's lost wedding ring. Let's 
give it a go. All right, Doug's here. We can get this party started. Yeah. Alright, we've got some freshie here guys. This is like a competitor to Tang or Kool-Aid from the 70s. Yeah. So, and a pocket full of nails. That's what we've dug in the first few holes. You're not missing anything. Piece of uh, Lipton vegetable soup here. Another old one. These guys seem to like to just take their tin foil and scrumple it up and throw it on the ground. And then we've got something green in here. Well, copper, Maybe copper. Copper, copper wire or copper something. Let me just try that with the probe and see. Nope. A little further from the house and we got some uh, some older items here, probably from the logging days. There's a little buckle and then uh, maybe part of a boot uh, grommet, but where the shoelace goes through or whatever. And then a bunch of old nails. We were getting a really good signal in here, but it was a great big old square nail. So lots of stuff all over. All right, here's a cool one. Uh, heavy old butt plate, brass butt plate off of a gun. We'll give that a bit of a clean up. All right, so this butt stock is pretty interesting. There's no markings on it. There are square nails in it. Um, we're just trying to figure out age. Uh, this might even be go back to black powder era. We're not sure. Lee Enfield 303. Uh, we're not sure about this tang on here. We'll have to do some research and find out. We're giving that to the research department here. Russ has got his Google going. He'll find out for us. Okay, so Doug's keen eyes here pointed out that there is a number 22 on the back of this butt plate. I guess it would be the bottom, the uh, top. That would be the top of the butt plate. And we were looking at the, the nails here, as I would say, would have been, you know, 18 something the way they're corroded and they were square and then the square rib going right down the middle looks a little more modern as well so I'm not sure we'll have to do some research our research guy couldn't find anything so <laughs> well we're gonna look up to 22 suspenders but when you go to shit in a hurry <laughs> they are problematic <laughs> that's going in my video Doug <laughs> I, I know this when I was working there's an old suspender clip, guys, probably from the logging days. And as Doug says, nobody likes to wear suspenders nowadays. Yeah, yeah some kind of old horse tack here. So Doug says there's a, a bottle dump that he doesn't think is that old, but we're gonna check it out because I told him quite often the older dumps are right underneath the newer dumps. So lead on, Doug. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Big old fresh moose track, that's a big moose. Yeah, well there is a lot out here. And you said that wasn't here yesterday, eh? Well no, because I pushed all this yesterday. Oh, well there you go. <laughs> Came out to have a look at what you were doing this morning then. That's just for size. Yeah, leave it there for a sec, Doug. Okay, that would surprise me, Doug, if this bottle dump was that far from the homestead. Oh, there's a bottle right there, Doug. Uh, there's a few ones. Okay, yeah, look it. Okay, so here's the old. What do we got? Uh, screw top. Triple crown. Hey. <laughs> okay, so these aren't that old, but. 
broken porcelain over there. Oh, perfume. Yeah, would have had the squeeze bottle. Oh, that's a cool find right there, Doug. That's history. Piss pot. <laughs> Worn right out. <laughs> that's a, That right there is a cool find, Doug. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Smell it. Anything in there? <laughs> well, there is an actual scent to it. Yeah. But... Oh, yeah, very faint. Is, I couldn't describe it, but there is. There is a smell, but as far as what it is. Yeah. These are older. Here's a license plate. This should tell us right here. Uh, 71. So there's everything from 71, at least. I do see some stuff looks a little older. These are barrel rings. Yeah. The... But yeah, I like the plates here too. That's the top off of a milk jug right there, isn't it? Or is 57. it? 57. Okay, so we're we're between 71 and 57 here. Oh, there's a little. Oh, it's broken. Burdock blood. Oh, blood? Blood bitters. What is that? Blood bitters. There's a bunch of these bottles. T. Mill Burns Company Limited. Here's a little plate or something. Yeah, Broken. Part of the teacup, too. But fancy. Oh yeah, fancy. Oh, it's got uh, gold edging on there. Corvassier bottle, I believe. That brandy. It looks like it to me. Oh, an old brandy bottle. You know what one of these ones, Russ? There's a bunch of these. Oh, you know, that's old style with the with the hollowed out bottom. Those are oh, older. They, they did that with... Uh, Campaigns. Oh, and look at the top of this too. That that's, that's an 1800s big, bottle right there. That's yeah, that's 1800s bottle. Yeah. Oh, there you go. An old fork. Yeah. And a little uh, medicine, bottle, medicine bottle, a pill bottle. Sort of, yeah. This this here is a keeper. This is a that's a good find. Swivel off an old chair. Jackie's chair. Could be. I don't know. Used to sit in the chair and drink his brandy. <laughs> See, you got to come up with a story, guys, right? Like, yeah. yeah it's, it's all got to be pieced together. The old sardine tin or something. Hey, see this? That was one that my family made in Powassan. As far as we know, that's... Okay, the, with the, the star. Family. And what year were they making those? Uh, 18... 1897 the railway came through and it was it was two years prior to that that we moved here and um, it was they, they quit building it, um, seven years after I think so so right turn of the century then yeah 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 there's this uh, this goes right back Dude, and Russ is blood bitter, bitter. Russ says that blood bitters is from the 1920s the bottle style is from the 20s to the 30s that's when they were using them. And is that for horses or humans? <laughs> Burdock blood bitters. We'll check in with the research department in a minute here. There's lots more stuff to find. DC, so. DC bricks for Daniel Clark, which were, which were made in Powassan as well. I just forget the years. That Would that have been turn of the century as well? Oh yes. Yeah, before 1900. Daniel Clark, okay. 1870s, Burdock Blood Bitters, Foster Milburn Company. What is Blood Bitters, Russ? I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, syringe bottle. Or uh, animal medicine. I was going to say that's uh, veterinary yeah. medicine right there. I don't know how collectible those things are either. I've never found one. Let's put it that way, Doug. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen one myself, so that's new. What was Burdock Blood Bitters used for? According to AQ Digital Collections, East Carolina University, Nature's True Renovator, Burdock Blood Bitters.
process is used for regulating the bowels, purifies the blood, acts upon the kidneys and liver, and cures dyspepsia and indigestion. Testimonials follow. <laughs> Melbourne and Company, Buffalo, New York. There you go. And there you have it. Keep your bowel movements regular with blood bitters. Probably poison and Okay, milk jug, yeah. <laughs> Watch where you step. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the old Cerdo. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh yeah, That's the blue. Modern, but yeah. They're still really nice. Milk and magnesia. Put into your uh, windowsill and let the sun come through, you know. Genuine Phillips, made in Canada. Phillips milk and magnesia? Yep. Keep you regular. Oh, look at this. We're going back in time here even more. 1932. That would have been a, probably on a Model T Ford or something. You got a week's worth of digging right here, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I'm going to hang out with Doug, guys, because look at <laughs> He's got one of the original early settlement patterns in selected townships in our area, and you're saying these are very hard to get a hold They're of? They're hard to find these books. There was only yeah. so many made, and uh, the university would have copies, but obviously... Okay, well, we're, we're going to be besties now, Doug. <laughs> it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be parting with them. Great Grandpa Morrow, he's got a bunch of property, but uh, the... the that he got from the from the crown, but it's uh, it was non-workable. Like it was, this is in behind spot. And so that means it was returned with the triangle. Yeah, I have to check the thing here to tell you what the triangle. I was. knew Doug was a good guy to hang out with because he's got books. He's got <laughs> uh, that one's just uh, for original land looking. reverted to crown right there. Yeah, and those the open ones. And see, uh, my other great grandfather. Okay, this is where they had the brick the brick plant that we were talking 1895 about. 1895 or whatever it was you said? Well, which one is he? He is... Eleven. Okay, yeah. That they had those lots. So they would have got the other hundred and then the railway the railway went through the farm uh eighteen oh it was a little bit after that, eighteen ninety seven I think it was. Alright guys, Doug says I can take this top pocket find with me, so I'm gonna take that one, the old brandy bottle, that's pretty cool. I think Russ is taking a couple of these as well. A couple of the burdock blood bitters. Okay. Yeah, those are cool. I think that's it for today, guys. I've run out of time, but we will definitely have to come back to this site. Between the garbage dump and the digging for the ring out there, Doug's not going to be able to get rid of me, so stay tuned. <laughs>